Now that you guys are all jacked up on very rich desserts, now we'll get you guys to sit quietly and listen for a few minutes. That that should go well. Um, but this is a really, really, for me, this is a really special night. I think everyone at Governor's School is sad and disappointed that we aren't able to have the teachers here this year. Having them on campus, walk around with you guys to go to your classes to see what you're doing is an is an awesome afternoon of activities the fact that you guys put a lot of thought into nominating your teachers and identifying somebody who's been very influential in your academic careers those are some of my favorite certificates besides yours to sign you'll get those certificates those of you who nominated teachers will get those certificates on Saturday during the closing ceremonies so please try to keep those as uncrinkled as possible so you can give them something that's not wadded up um, I know that'll be a challenge but before I get too far into this I want to say a few thank yous uh, we've had almost four full weeks of eating a lot of food uh, in this building some of you order out more than you probably should and you guys are missing out on some really delicious food in here but I want to take a moment to thank our dining service staff for everything that they've done for us this past month and everything they continue to do for us I also want to thank a, a few other people. Uh, Rick Cash is the guy that brought this podium over, set this microphone up, ran the cord in the ballroom. Every one of those chairs that's set up is set up by him and his staff. Um, he, he goes unrecognized quite a bit, so I want to make sure I get a publicly acknowledged all the work that Rick Cash and his crew with Jeff Welsh and summer conferences do for us. So if you could please clap for Rick, I would appreciate that as well. Also in the back of the house is David Woody, who's running this live stream. Uh, he's not going to smile or acknowledge that I have mentioned him in any way. Uh, but this is a high-tech thing for us. This is my first time on YouTube. Uh, so I guess I could call myself a YouTuber now. Uh, so if you didn't know, this is being live streamed on the college's official YouTube channel. There's been links that have gone out. Your parents might be on here. Your teachers may be on here. Uh, so thanks for the help in getting this uh, technology set up. So we can at least connect with your teachers, even your parents if they're on here as well. So thank you. Uh, last night, oh, clap, go ahead. I'm sorry. I almost took away his applause. There's several faculty that came tonight as well. So in addition to you guys nominating your teachers, the work that your faculty have done for you this past month is, is always awesome. The work that you guys do, it, the 2D animation class, I don't know what role you played in it or if it was more Professor Noel, but the, the three minute video that I had the privilege of watching today was probably one of the best things that I've seen in 14 years in this program. It made me smile from ear to ear year it was awesome unfortunately I can't publicly show it unless we change some of the music uh, but if anyone's interested um, you could talk to somebody from 2d animation if they have it or you could see me I've got it as well we just can't show it publicly but please thank your teachers your professors that have put in a ton of work they have said nothing but glowing things about you and the work that you guys have done in class in particular the ones that show up to class on time And then finally, I want to thank Jennifer and Christy Rapp. So Jennifer Monroe is the assistant director of the program. Uh, you, you don't get to see her every day because she's running around. She's scheduling rooms. She's making sure that we have a live stream of this. She's ordering the desserts that you guys ate tonight. Uh, she's writing the emails home to your parents. She's doing a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily get seen out front, uh, but she does a ton of work. So please give Jennifer since she's here <laughs> So 
So even during the opening and closing ceremonies, Jennifer oftentimes doesn't get to go to that because she's at check-in or check-out. So this is really the, the one time she gets to be publicly acknowledged by you guys. So if you want to give her a second round, I'm sure that would be appreciated. And also, Christy Rapp, who works as our administrative assistant, does all, prints all the certificates. She's helped out with opening ceremonies. I'm sure she'll be here for the closing ceremonies and does a lot of stuff as well. She's not here, so we don't need to clap, but you could clap silently in your head that she does a lot, and we're very appreciative of her work. Now, normally on this day, we would have the teachers in, and then we would have classes open in the afternoon for you to talk or to take your teachers around and see different things that are going on in different classes at the program. Instead of doing that, and obviously we can't do that, we thought the next best thing was to have each class president give a short 60-second talk about what's going on in their class. So if I can have each of the class presidents come up. My name is Roaming, and I serve as the class president for Tales from the Genome. Tales from the Genome transcends the scope of your basic biology class, delving into the molecular level of genetics. We study DNA replication as well as various analysis techniques, such as polymerase chain reaction. From bacteria and water across the city to our own cheek cells, we examine numerous DNA samples using gel electrophoresis, honing our micropipetting skills along the way. We also consider the ethical implications of emerging biotechnology and sometimes heated discussions. As one of our two major projects, we let our creativity run wild and des designed our own GMOs, competing against each other for funding. Our class provided us both invaluable lab experience and opportunities to research genetic topics of our interest, with, of course, occasional Disney Princess performances by Professor Ryerson. Tales from the Genome was truly a memorable, hands-on experience that opened our eyes to a whole new world of genetics. I also can't forget to thank Professor Ryerson, Professor Russell, and all of my teachers back in Virginia Beach. Good evening. Um, my name is Sharmila Dapa, and I've had the wonderful opportunity to be the class president for Body Quest and Exploration in Anatomy and Physiology, which is taught by our amazing professor, Kim Geyer. I think she's here. Um, the class explored a wide range of anatomy and physiology topics through animal dissections and guest speakers. We met so many new people and learned about different fields of medicine and their impacts on society. We also deepened our understanding through numerous field trips like visiting the Old City Cemetery and the University of Lynchburg Graduate School's Cadaver Lab. But by far the most interesting and exciting part of this course was the fetal pig dissection. Professor Geyer has fostered our love for biology and chemistry and has opened our eyes to so many new concepts. I think all 15 of my classmates can agree that the smell of formaldehyde as we walked into the air conditioned room would be unforgettable as well as the amazing collaborative experience we all had in gaining a greater understanding of the realm within our bodies. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alice and I'm the president of the class Water Water Everywhere. Water Water Everywhere isn't an ordinary class about water molecules. The class allows students to better understand the nuanced relationship between people and water. We have learned about the vast impacts that people and water have on each other. From the impacts of the poultry industry on the ecosystem in the Chesapeake Bay to the political implications of water resources and growing water scarcity, Water Water Everywhere allows us to challenge our understanding of the environment around us. Throughout the class, students Students have learned about the concepts such as interconnectedness of ground and surface water through labs, case studies, and field trips. Professor Duckworth has shared her vast experiences with us, ranging from modern water crises to her numerous travels, which creates an engaging atmosphere. Overall, the information learned throughout the course has allowed us to become more informed about one of Earth's most valuable resources. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Brooke Ballhouse and I'm a rising senior at Wakefield School in the Plains. In my class, Debunking Scientific Claims, Dr. Lang focused not only on analyzing research based on statistical significance, but also on designing internally and externally valid studies. We learned about the variables and statistical tests used by such studies and familiarized ourselves with SPSS, the program by which these studies are run. Our final project for this class is a presentation of our own research study design. In this presentation, we will outline and analyze numerous other studies on our topic, as well as defend our study's internal and external validity in our proposed design. We will end our presentation by describing the statistical tests we would run to determine the results of our studies. After just a month here at Governor's School, we have learned so much valuable information about producing and consuming research. Thank you so much, Dr. Lang, and all of my teachers back home. I am Omer, uh, and as the class president of 2D Animation, I have been called up to say a few words regarding what we do. As you may imagine, we make 2D animations. To be more descriptive, however, in 2D Animation, we take what we have in our imagination and bring it to life. Whether it be an imaginative description of a balloon floating through the air, or a simple walk cycle that turns out to be nowhere near as simple as it seemed. By taking 2D Animation, we have all learned to be more aware of the hitting intricacies of seemingly mundane actions and movements. Taking this class has been an exercise in understanding has been an exercise in understanding perspective and how to utilize it in a way that accomplishes the goals we set out for ourselves in pursuit of realizing our respective visions. All in all, Dr. Noel has taught us far more than just making a stick figure dance and play the fiddle. There's much more there's much in our lives that we take for granted and in the pursuit of recreating or exaggerating these things, we have learned to analyze and apply our, our, our observations to the worlds we create on screen. Uh, good evening, my name is Dominic King and I'm the president of the Dirt Under the Fingernails Mathematics class. And I want to begin by saying that in the very first day of our class, no one really knew what to expect. But I vividly remem remember our wonderful teacher, Dr. Ordower, walking in with a shirt that had the words, math is the language of the universe plastered across the front. And being the nerd that I am, my first thought was, wow, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this class. Now, beginning with a passionate and dedicated professor, the DIRT class approaches almost everything it does from a non-traditional perspective. We look at algebra in an abstract sense, graphs in a literal sense, and even how the game of dots and boxes could possibly have so much math involved in it. Now, the way a math class would usually work is that a teacher would introduce you to a concept and then give you homework based on that concept. But in DIRT, it's the opposite. We're introduced to work first, and then we form our own concepts and methods of solving the problems. Both the experiences we have shared and the material we have learned over the course of this month are invaluable, and we owe both of those things to Dr. Ordor and the Governor's School. Thank you. The act of looking and really seeing nourishes my soul. Recited to us on the first day of instruction, this quote from Dr. John Day perfectly encapsulates the basis of teachings in our class, Eyes in the Skies, Meteorology of Atmospheric Phenomena, run by the virtuoso of environmental sciences, Dr. Warren. During class, we spend time keeping our heads in the skies, learning about cloud formation, frontal systems, and other atmospheric and meteorological phenomena. To further our understanding on various weather systems, we went on numerous field trips to places like Randolph College's Art Museum, where we observed and applied our knowledge of weather in modern art. While attending class, we've also been able to spot many obscure phenomena we were unaware of before, such as supernumerary bows, double rainbows, and even sun dogs, all of which we were very excited to witness. Because of the wonderful class environment and teaching, my classmates and I have gained a new appreciation for the layers above us, and I've learned that when in doubt, the way to look is up and out. Thank you. Hello, my name is Akil, and I'm the class president for Dark Night Sky, which is taught by Dr. Butner. And thank you for being such an amazing teacher this year. Dark Night Sky began by redefining science. We define science as deriving theoretical concepts from test proven models based on experimentation. From here, we built our basis of classical and modern physics, as well as mathematics, to aid us in quantifying the science of space. 
We explore concepts such as our own planet, the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, the rest of our solar system, our galaxy, and our universe's past, present, and future as a whole, cosmology. We quantified astrophysics by exploring distance estimation, dynamic climate modeling, orbital mechanical designing, and planetary engineering. And it's this endeavor of knowledge and application that, while some sleep, we see under the dark night sky. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ryder from the Science of Strength class. We work with Dr. Collins to learn exercise physiology. As he describes it, exercise physiology examines how the body reacts to and adapts to activity and exercise over time. A lot of what we talk about is how we can use this science to improve general health and wellness, as well as sport performance across all kinds of different sports. Throughout the month, we've taken all kinds of data on ourselves, including blood pressure, mobility, food logs, body composition, breathing efficiency, weightlifting maximums, and sprint speeds. All of that information can then be taken back to the classroom, where we can learn about our bodies and how it applies to ourselves in our daily lives. That all culminated in our final project, creating a year-long training program designed to provide unique benefits to each person depending on their goals. Uh, he's not here today, but I know I speak for my class when I thank Dr. Collins. It's been a great month. It would not be, have been possible without him, and we appreciate him very much. Hello. Hello. My name is Jack Fries, and I am the class president of Electron Control. In this class, we use electrical components such as transistors, capacitors, and resistors to create the fundamental circuits of computing. These components control the flow of electricity throughout the circuit, hence the name electron control. And so this makes it possible to, to, to achieve a variety of different uh, tasks. Uh, including decision making and counting. So far, the most significant circuits we have made are a full binary digit adder and an arithmetic logic unit, uh, which are uh, fundamental pieces of a CPU. Our teacher, Dr. Gardner, who's over there, uh, has greatly contributed to our class experiences, even in the most painful times of troubleshooting. The class has also provided students with a way to connect with each other. Students are able to share their successes and help fellow peers uh, on their circuits. With that said, I appreciate the opportunity to speak here, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their night. Thank you. Let's give our class presidents one more round of applause. Thank you, guys. As expected, those the speeches were quite impressive. <laughs> one more group to thank and one more person to thank before I get into a few more of my remarks. I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to acknowledge the hardest working group in Governor's School, which is our residence life staff. They're going to be thanked again on Saturday, but while you're all here and while we're thanking everybody, please give your residence life staff a round of applause. And this next person probably won't speak to me again for the rest of my life, but there is somebody that doesn't normally come to this event who came tonight, and that's my wife. I'm old and I start crying at weird moments, so I'm not going to, but she puts up with a lot. I'm gone a lot and, and she's awesome. So thank you very much.
So let me talk more about teachers. And at the heart of it, I'm a teacher. Unfortunately, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately. Fortunately, for four weeks, I get to put on an administrator's hat and direct this program. But for the other 11 months, I teach. So to have a moment to acknowledge and celebrate teachers that do this for a profession and for a living is an awesome, awesome moment. And when you guys had the opportunity to think about the teacher that made a profound impact on you, every year we do this, I go through the list in my head of teachers that had a huge impact on me. People like Mrs. Gross, who was the National Chemistry Teacher of the Year in California, my baseball coach, my football coach, anyone who's ever interacted with me and my two very best teachers in life was my mom and dad. Hopefully you guys, when you get home, have an opportunity to thank your parents for everything that they've done for you, the opportunities that they've given you, and just say thank you to them. Now, moving forward, teachers don't always get the credit or the respect that they probably deserve. In my opinion, this is the most important profession in the world. More so than anything else you do, because no matter what happened before that, somebody had to teach you how to do it. Teaching at the heart of it is how we get to places that we need to go. Well, you could talk about the heart and the head, but if somebody doesn't help you make those connections and teach you along the way, it's gonna be very challenging moving forward to get anything done. Don't ever be afraid to go into this as a profession because you guys all have a gift and your gift to be able to pass that along to others would be noble and it would be very awesome. You guys are a gifted group of people and this is an awesome, awesome, awesome profession. So, let me just kind of go through, there was a YouTube video that I came across by a guy named Taylor Molly. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy, but the story that he kind of gave was he was sitting at a table, and at this table was a bunch of people that talked about what they did for a living. Lawyers, doctors, all great professions, but at the heart of it, they talked about what they made. They made a lot of money. You heard our speaker today talk about paying an emergency room physician $500,000, and they would never last in that job for very long. When they got to the person at the table who was a teacher, they asked, well, what do you make as a teacher? It can't be much. And this was his response as what teachers make. So what's a kid going to learn from somebody who decided the best option in life was to become a teacher? You make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. You make a C plus feel like the Congressional Medal of Honor. You make kids sit through 40 minutes of class time when some parents can't make them sit for five minutes without an iPad, iPod, video game, or Netflix. You make kids wonder. You make them question. You make them apologize and mean it. You make them have respect and take responsibility for their actions. You teach them how to write and you make them write. Keyboarding isn't everything. You make them read, read, read. You make them show their work in math. They use their God-given brain and not the man-made calculator. You make your classroom a place where all of your students feel safe and secure. Finally, you make them understand if they use the gifts that they were given, work hard, and follow their hearts, they can succeed in life. When people try to judge you by what you make, you can hold your head up high. And in the end, teachers make a difference in the lives of everyone they interact with. And this is how I know how much your teachers make a difference. We've collected some of the quotes and comments that you guys made about your teachers, and I'm going to read a few of those now. She didn't only teach us teach the class about digital applications, she taught the class about real life situations and took the time out of her day to stay and help my peers and myself when we needed it most. A mentor and confidant at times when I doubted my own capabilities. Does everything in her power to make her classroom an environment that every type of student has a chance to thrive in. No one was unimportant. If you asked a question, she'd answer. If she didn't know the answer, she'd find one. And three years later, she is still answering my questions. I cannot envision my success without the help of this teacher. If I could attribute all my academic accomplishments to one person, it would be her. Someone even wrote that a teacher responded with a 150-page PDF to answer one question. This teacher has had many other professional opportunities, but he chose to teach. Thank goodness. 
So to you teachers, if there are any teachers out there on this virtual land, uh, thank you for what you do. Thank you for inspiring that the students that are here. Thank you to the teachers that are sitting behind me and thank you to any teachers that you have the opportunity to interact with in the future. So this message is for the teachers watching. You may not always be told this and you may not realize this, but you have the most important job in the world. I hope some of you guys follow in the footsteps as educators and become people that make a difference in future generations. I know you guys have a talent show to go to, and that's probably what you're thinking about the most, but don't ever forget the role that your teachers, your family, and anyone who's ever taught you has had an impact or made a difference in your lives. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate your time. Enjoy your talent show. Do the RAs would like to make an announcement, or I thought I just dismissed everyone, but nobody moved. <laughs> you got announcements? What? Well, come on. Back to the yeah, yeah, yeah announcements, all right. If you were in the talent show, see Nikita after dinner. Meet on your halls at 7.20 Eastern Standard Time, p.m. to walk over to the talent show. And then you have a morning run with Jason at 6.15 a.m. tomorrow. Meet in the parking lot. Jason and Anthony are having a Kahoot game